about sampling as well, but using robotic manipulators and more likely how are we going from teleoperation to autonomy. So first of all, what's the comparison between the deep sea and the deep space is that they are uh, quite alike in order to use the Earth's ocean in order to, to study the space. And NASA has been done that and in the past years they have funded a few projects and one of them is the project uh, that we work on and it was a PSTAR project and the idea was to take these robotic manipulators uh, underwater to collect samples in underwater volcanoes, but then working at very high depths. So we wanted to collect sediments uh, of the soil in these volcanoes in order to study uh, the ocean floor, what kind of composites are in there and how this affects the life. And this can be translated to any other outer uh, planet to study. So in how can we do that? We saw earlier the landers, it's uh, an option, but we want to have more autonomy and like uh, enlarge the space where we can work at. So a robotic manipulator, it's a good idea to, to use that. And these kind of robots that are currently used for the, uh, the, these applications are uh, large pieces of equipment that are mostly hydraulic and they have teleoperated from a surface vessel. Uh, so you have to imagine that we are working at very low uh, depths. So in the ideas like a few thousand meters and in this kind of conditions you need special materials and we have to reach somehow those environments. And by attaching these kind of manipulators on remotely operated vehicles, a type of unmanned underwater vehicle, we can reach these environments. But again, to have the capabilities to reach these environments, we have to use very pieces uh, of equipment, so large vehicles with large manipulators, uh, that they need a lot of infrastructures in order to be deployed and in order to be operated. And the current state of the art is teleoperation. So everything happens from a surface vessel. And this is how usually a control room on that surface vessel looks like. So a lot of computers, a lot of screens. You want to see your environment where you are working. And then you have a lot of people there. So you will have the scientists that are going to say to the um, operators of the um, vehicle and the manipulator what data to collect, what, what samples to grab. Right, so just to give you an idea how this works, we, okay, sorry. Um, so this is a video with uh, this kind of teleoperation application that, that's very slow, sorry for this. So uh, this is doing our Costa Rica field trips last December and the idea is to go and grab samples. I'm sorry for the video, I don't know why doing that. But as you can see, it's very, very slow. So the R moves, tries to pick a sample, but then you have to orientate all the cameras. And all of this, the operators and the scientists have to do. And this video is actually five times at the speed of the normal video. So just for collecting that sample, like just pushing uh, that push cord and collecting the sample and then bringing it back to the tray, all this has been done in more than five minutes. Okay, I'll stop this. So really uh, quite a bit of time and that's very inefficient. So what if we can improve this? What can we, what can we design in order to uh, develop more autonomy for this kind of systems? And for we want, first of all, to ease the ROV operation work, like the operators that are doing the manipulation task and controlling the vehicle. We want to improve the sampling precision. We want to have like better accuracy in the area that we are doing the sampling. We want to decrease the time uh, done for this kind of sampling. But overall, what we want to achieve is having full autonomy. So also you have to think that manipulation in general, it's like done in factories and there everything is fully autonomous. Why is that? Because in those kind of conditions, everything is controlled. Like there's like no change in the environment. While working in underwater environments, there's a lot of change, everything is dynamic. So in order for autonomy to happen, we need to compensate for all of that. And that's why uh, work, a lot of work is still out there and the current state of the art is fully uh, teleoperation so far. So in order to achieve that, we started with the robotic system. So we work uh, at 
uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic. And we took uh, the vehicle, the NHT, that's a hybrid tether vehicle. And it's like this really massive uh, vehicle that is rated up to 10,000 meters depth. And then we took a hydraulic teleoperated manipulator. Generally, we attach it here. You can see it in the, uh, in the photo. So I don't know. And uh, that one is a craft underwater hydraulic arm that has the capability of lifting up to a few hundred kilograms um, of payload. So, but all the system is able to operate all together up to 6,000 meters depth. So we can reach like very low and dangerous environments. And then we uh, placed a bunch of cameras on the system. We started by putting a camera on the end effector of the manipulator. So that's the image that you see in the left. And then we placed another pair of cameras on the vehicle, the cameras that you see in the right. Uh, in order to understand better the area where uh, the, the system works. And now, taking all the system, we want to facilitate autonomy. So how does it work? The camera will give us information of the environment. So we basically can do scene understanding autonomously. So the system can decide where, uh, what objects to pick or where to sample. Um, and then we have a motion and interaction planning algorithm that is going to decide how the arm should move in order to pick that, and then the controllers that they are actually going to control the, the whole system and basically the manipulator. For scene understanding, again, we want to have like this reconstruction, er estimate the target location and orientation, and, but we also want to ensure that we are tracking all the time the end effect or movement position because using hydraulic systems, it's not really necessarily exact having that information directly from the manipulator. So having some camera feedback is important. And all of this has been presented by Gideon, my colleague, yesterday in one of the poster sessions. And now here you can see exactly one, how one of these reconstructions is looking like, and this is an indoor reconstruction that we have at uh, Woods Hole. And you can see there's an object, and it's like a kiddie pool with some sand. And then here it's the reconstruction from actual field works that we had in Costa Rica, and this is what the robot is perceiving when it's starting its autonomy uh, process. Now, we have the motion interaction planning. So we want to create what are the best paths in order to go and sample those uh, environments. Uh, and all this inf the information that it's using is the current state of the robot, but also all the images collected with the camera system and so on. So we developed an algorithm here that's optimal uh, model-based planning, and the idea is that you are going to generate some sort of plans based on the dynamic states of the system and the environment. And then you are going to decide these laws uh, so that all the constraints are always uh, com like um, uh, accepted in terms like instead if you don't want to um, uh, move a sample in an area that you shouldn't have or if you want to avoid an object or if you don't want to hit the vehicle with the sample in your hand that's the most important thing and then in the case when this is fulfilled we are going to optimize so we obtain the best possible solution and you can find more details in a robotics conference about this and now that we have a planner, the idea is how are we going to control the system? So we actually want to move the robot autonomously to do that. And this happens in the controller. So they are using to control the motors and the servo valves. But for hydraulic systems, it's really important to compensate for disturbances, uh, for noise, and uncertainties in the environment. And for this, uh, we have used a system that is uh, based on a model-based integral slidey controller. And the idea here is that the system can adapt all the time and can take into account the uncertainties in the behavior of the system. And then also this can be found in a different paper. Now, some initial results. These initial results are only with uh, the arm itself uh, without any kind of uh, vehicle and so on. And this is in a controlled environment. And uh, you will see here, the idea was to have this manipulator with a push cord in this ski pool uh, and do some sort of autonomous sampling and following a specific path. I hope the video will work. 
see? Okay. Yeah. So you will see now how the, this is also five times the speed. It's still like, it's just going down and up, down and up, trying to, to sample in a certain pattern. So those were the first experiments that we did. And here it's full autonomy in terms of like planning the, the path of the system. And, okay. yes. and then uh, a few a month ago, uh, we had the first wet uh, tests that were happening in a small controlled environment in a pool. So we put here, you can see just part of the system. You can see the vehicle, you can see the manipulator with one of the cameras. And then like the trays with all the push cords that the robot has to uh, pick and place and sample the environment. Unfortunately, the video is not available. But all this system is going to be deployed uh, this year in Greece in November 2009. So we hope to have this whole full system uh, closely gathered together and collecting samples in a volcano at around uh, 600 meters uh, depth. And uh, we still have a lot of work to do in order to uh, achieve full autonomy in terms of improving the computational speeds for planners and then as well as for the perception side and scene understanding. And um, there's a lot, a lot of work still to be done before having full autonomy. But at least we have components that can help the um, pilots in to remotely operate the system. So thank you very much. You have questions.